everybody welcome to teensy vintage I'm Teresa and today we're going to be working in my junk journal this is one I've used many times before you can see that Vincent Price spread over there that's a video I'll try to remember to put a link to it down in the description um, today we are just going to try and have some fun I made this on Tuesday night Tuesday was a rough day for me I uh, <clears throat> forgot to take my medication the night before, completely forgot it, and proceeded to have a truly awful day the next day. Um, don't forget to take your medication, kids. Anywho, uh, I got into the studio because I was like, you know what? I need to make something. I need to make it now. Um, art really does heal, y'all. This is, this is one way to help. Um, granted medication is very helpful too. I just hadn't realized that I hadn't taken it yet. Anyway, we are currently putting some scrap pages, some various scrap, uh, scrapbook papers, ephemera, a few printables, um, that kind of stuff down to cover up uh, this beautiful chicken. <laughs> And I think what was a state parks map at one time. You can make a junk journal out of anything, y'all. It's fantastic. So I'm using up a bunch of neutral colored scraps. And these all have text or musical notes or scribbles of some kind on them. Uh, one of them, I think, is an old menu. Uh, New York Public Library has a collection of vintage and antique menus that they've digitized and they're beautiful. I just love seeing what people ate a hundred years ago and how much it cost, you know, like a lobster dinner was 40 cents. Granted, 40 cents a hundred years ago was a lot of money. Um, or was it? I don't know. Lobster wasn't a big deal until I think the sixties or something. I don't know. Here I am going down a rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, I'm just, Roughing up some pages, tearing them, using my glue stick to put them down on the page. Um, that chicken flyer was actually for a chicken keeping course that I used to teach uh, as a continuing education uh, course. I used to have chickens in my backyard and I loved them, but they were a lot of work, y'all. And they were so expensive. If you want fresh eggs, really go to the farmer's market. <laughs> You will not get cheap eggs by having your own chickens. I lost count of how many thousands of dollars I spent. Um, anyway, yeah, just covering up all the background paper here, giving myself a nice neutral colored palette. There's browns and beiges and grays. Granted, I have no idea what I'm going to make. I, I kind of do, but not really. This actually turns into a much more sophisticated um, journal spread than I was intending to make, but that's okay. Sometimes you just need to glue some stuff. It feels really good. So I have this cute picture of two little girls um, that I found on the internet. And then I also have these other two little girls who have these, you know, comical robber masks on that I bought as part of a, a digital printable kit on, on Etsy. Uh, and they just cracked me up. So I was like, hmm, which one do I want to use? And then I thought, you know what, instead of gluing it to the page, I'm going to make it into a tag and I'm going to put them in a pocket. And I had this other printable. I'm very into printables right now, in case you couldn't tell, um, of old library card catalog that I'm going to turn into a pocket. So it's just a matter of trimming it to size, and that looks like it's gonna work. I wanted to cut off just a little bit more, and this is faster and neater. And then I'm gonna put a little notch in the top so that it's a bit easier to take out uh, the tag from the pocket. So I'm gonna you know, ink all the edges here with good old Distress Oxide in Vintage Photo and then measure to make sure that the tag I'm gonna put in there will fit. That is a black die cut. And to be extra about it, I'm gonna use some photo corners and that's how I will put that picture of the two 
gals with their masks on the black um, die cut rectangle. I also added some vintage photo ink to the corners because the white was really bright and I just wanted to kind of grunge it up a little bit. Um, and I think that just helps it look a little better. Yeah, so that's gonna work. Excellent, and I'm really happy with that. So now I'm looking for a little piece of ribbon or sari silk, um, S-A-R-I, not sorry, um, but you know, uh, leftovers from the silk saris that Indian women like to wear. Um, I found a woman on Etsy who will sell you a bag of scraps. And I use these in my art projects all the time. They're beautiful. They've got great texture. Anyway, that's one of those little scraps. And hey, it's upcycling. Otherwise, I probably would have gone in the trash. Okay, so like I said, this is a very neutral background and I am going to go off of the blue dresses those little girls were wearing. So I'm using a blue um, Stabilo Woody pencil. This is number 450. It's kind of a medium blue um, and I'm now using some water to activate it just to make it look a little a little more organic and those are just totally random scribbles I'm also going to do some stenciling here and I was looking for the speckled egg which is a beautiful light blue and this is the first time I'm actually using this um, particular ink. It's very delicate, but I was like, you know what? I think this will look really nice. Oh, that was me adjusting the music on the laptop. <laughs> the mouse doesn't have anything to do with this art project. So I'm using a Dilutions stencil and just making some blue elongated circles here. They're a little bit like eggs, which I was like, haha, speckled egg, robin's egg blue. Yeah, egg shaped things. So it looks very subtle here on the page and it is kind of subtle. I didn't want the stencil to be too loud as it were because the two focal points that I'm gonna have are pretty, you know, intense looking in terms of eye catching and they're, you know, deep brown. There's a lot of gold hints. There's a lot of you know, there's some drama in these pictures. So I'm um, using art glitter glue there and seeing if my tag will fit and it does. Okay, so I was getting that out of the way so I don't get anything else on it. Now I'm going to cut this other printable, which this one is, oh gosh, I don't remember. I'll have to look it up, y'all. If you if you see something here and you're like, where did you get that? Please put it in the comments and I'll see if I can't remember where I put, <laughs> where I got something. Um, but yeah, this one was really cool. Um, this was a handwritten list and the other one is a decorative piece. It says index. I'm also going to use my scissor blade to rough up some of these edges and make it look a little more um, loved. I'm also like, hmm, this needs a little something else. So I found a piece of scrapbook paper and I'm just trying to use that as, as another little background piece for um, the, the index piece. I'm gonna give it some blue ink to go with the speckled egg dots behind it. So I'm tying it all together with the blues. And then I'm gonna glue index to that little piece of paper that I made blue. And now I'm gonna do the edges in vintage photo. And that will stand out very nicely on what I am going to turn into a belly band. And a belly band, for those of you that may not know, is just a strip of paper that you glue the two ends down, but leave the middle untouched and you can slide other pieces of paper or little cards behind, just like that. And it will hold them in place in your journal. So I have this sweet picture of these two little girls and uh, I am going to glue them to a piece of cardstock with another printable on it. <laughs> Some grungy damask, I think that was the name of that one. And I think that came from 
Shabby Dabby Doodah, which is another YouTuber here. She makes printable kits and whatnot. And um, I am sticking that onto the cardstock because it needed a little more body or, or sturdiness to it. And this way, it has a front and a back. And that will go very nicely on that second page. So I'm going to ink up the sides to get rid of any white that's showing through and to kind of give it that vintage patina. Um, and I'm like, hmm, what if I make a little tiny tab so that this piece can be pulled in and out? And I took the leftover um, catalog, card catalog pieces and made a little tiny tab just by gluing that on there. And so now... Oh, and I forgot to curve my corners, so I said, you know what, I'll just do it manually. Mostly worked, not amazing, but it did okay. So now it can slide in and out really easily. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of gold acrylic paint uh, just around the edges, just to give it some shimmer and really amp up that vintagey look. And to make it look, you know, a little pretty. I don't know. I like gold. <laughs> uh, and that's an Amsterdam acrylic paint. And so now I'm drying it, making sure it is nice and dry. It wanted to curl, so I'm trying to uncurl it. And here we go. Both pieces fit. They look great. I'm going to take the vintage photo ink again and go around all the edges of this page just to give them some definition. And I'm also smudging a little bit back there just to give it a little more interest. And, you know, a little bit of depth. Um, now, I'm like, hmm, I've got all these little bits and bobs. I am trying to combine two or three of them to make a, a little cluster, I guess, that will go and be glued to the top of the catalog pocket that we made. So it's all going to kind of sit right there and just be something, something interesting, I guess. And I have a box of sentences and words that I cut out from an old book. And now I'm going through and I'm going to add some of them to each of the two tags. And I will put another little sentiment on top of um, the little cluster that I'm making as well. And I like to go around the old book pages with the vintage photo because it just really defines them. Uh, it gives them a nice vintagey look. Even though technically I think that book itself is vintage. It just helps. It kind of gives it a little bit of an outline which brings things, you know, makes things look better to the eye. And we're just going to trim this down. Ink up the edges. It can be a little tricky trying to ink something that's really small, uh, but just take your time. You'll get there. So there's um, a sentiment. And now I'm going to make the final one. And I'm sorry, this is kind of off screen, y'all. I apologize. I didn't realize that I was off camera here. But I'm taking an old postage stamp. Uh, it looks like a part of an old envelope and then just kind of gluing those together in an interesting cluster and then I will glue the cluster to the pocket. There we go. And just making sure it all dries. The art glitter glue is a really nice glue. It dries clear uh, and it dries really quickly too and a little goes a long way. So I've been enjoying using that quite a bit. Okay, so this is it. Um, please stick around. I've got nice close-up photos and you can see all the details. I hope y'all enjoyed this. I had a great time making it. It really did help me feel a lot better. And I hope y'all have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you next time.